In our very first story, the Professor Dora Francisca Edria Bwanda Committee's report has proposed an annual increase of 10% by 2017, but dated to 2013 for the political class listed under Article 71 of the 1992 Constitution. Now, that includes the President, the Vice President, the Speaker of Parliament, and legislators, judges, among others. The report, signed by Professor Dora Francisca Edria Buando, Chair of the Committee, explained that the recommendations were based on the Committee's guiding principles of fairness, equity, motivation, and ability of government to pay. Details of the report show that the president who takes home a non-taxable salary of 15,972 Ghana cities has now been pegged at a new 2016 salary of 22,809 Ghana cities. This translates into a 42.8% pay, pay rise over the four years. The chief justice head of the judiciary is paid 15,552 Ghana cities but can now expect a new figure of 17,107 Ghana City. So how were all of these figures determined and can it be supported by the economy? Senior economist and a member of the committee, Dr. William Bob Watting, has been given some explanations to my colleague, George Biafe. His uh, Excellency Nanado, by constitution, is supposed to set up a committee to also look at people who are in Article 71, executives, judiciary, parliament, and so on and so forth. So in that instance, uh, Nanado will have to set his own up. And I will recommend that it is set up as early mm. as possible. I wanted to, to, to butt in there, but so what stopped the committee from actually beginning their work from that January 2013? And that is now that we are hearing that the committee has finished its work and then they are making these recommendations. The committee was supposed to have been set up at that time. But it's the president who constitutes the committee. And the committee uh, was set up. I remember I got my letter. My letter was dated 26th of November 2015, call, I mean, calling me to be part of the committee. And it was inaugurated uh, on the 11th of January. That was when the committee was inaugurated, 11th of January 2016. So the committee started its work in January. 2016, the committee couldn't have uh, started work in December when it has not been set up. So we were called upon to do that in 2016. So that is how come uh, uh, it's like uh, the committee has delayed it. No, we were given uh, six months, uh, an additional two months to work. And I can say that if you look at all the committees, this is the only committee that was able to finish its work within six months. Mm -hmm. So we finished, we submitted our report in, 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 in August, so we were done. Mm. So that is how it is. So ideally, that should have been, and in our recommendation, we said that it is better for government to set up the committee early enough. So that is one of our recommendations. Mm. And two, we also recommended that setting up this committee every four years is not the best, even though I know that even uh, for other public service uh, workers, uh, we they, they, we have public service standing uh, negotiation committee that annually look at salaries of people in the single spine. So annually, they also have to look at that, and you know that this has been increased by twelve and a half percent, with effect from next year. So we think that there should be one independent body that will look at salaries of. Mm -hmm all public sector workers and i mean all public mm -hmm. sector workers and, um, that, and that's a recommendation from you that uh, we should be moving towards. exactly and that one requires a constitutional amendment mm. because uh, that 71 is, is in the constitution so they require a constitutional amendment and two we also realize that officers that have been listed that 71 makes determination of their salaries very confusing mm. because we have about three or four different groups the first one we are talking about Politicians, those who are elected to serve for four years. That is the president and members of parliament. And then we also have some members of the executives who are appointed by the president and may serve less than four years. Somebody can be appointed as a minister uh, in 2017 by, let's say, Nanado, and in 2018, 2019, he may be reshuffled and will not come back. 
So that person has served only two years. He is different from somebody who has been elected, like the president, and has four-year mandate. And then we also have the judiciary. And they are not elected. They are professionals. So this is a long kind of service. And they have been put together with those who are elected. Mm -hmm. Then we also have people who are independent uh, 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 constitutional bodies, like the electoral commissioner and NCC. I mean, they are like the judiciary. And so they are, this is also appointed, but you cannot also remove them. So we have different categories. And even with the independent constitutional bodies, we still have some of them who are part-timers. Mm -hmm. So how do you deal mm -hmm. with them? Mm -hmm. So this requires some kind of overhaul of this and a review uh, so that at least we have just one independent body mm. to, to do that. Help me out. What went into determining these salaries for these public officers? And is it that is one? And is it a one off payment or something that they are going to enjoy as long as they leave us a pension package? So first help me, what went into determining these packages uh, for one, the president, and even the other officers that draw their salary from the Article 71 or from the, uh, the consolidated fund? Well, in actual fact, we were given the terms of reference uh, to look at conditions of service of at the 71 office holders from January 2013. So when we and we, we, we did our work in such a way that we, we consulted almost people who matter. We consulted a lot of documents. We had to talk to those who are uh, members of 71 because we consider them as employees so we are standing in like employers who are negotiating with employees so we have to talk to them so we spoke to the president we spoke to the vice president we spoke we spoke to former uh, presidents we spoke to council of state uh, former chief of staffs we, we spoke to private sector organization we spoke to society organizations we spoke to a cross section of Ghanaians. we even had a uh, public fora uh, in Tamale, in Kumasi, and in Accra, and invited chiefs, opinion leaders, people to speak to, for them to tell us what it is, because they are employers. It's the public who employ the president. Mm -hmm. in, 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 so if I can put that way. So we have to consult them to be able to know how we should do our work. So based on the observations and so on. And we also have to look at best practices elsewhere. We had I mean, salaries of heads of states, of other countries, US, Kenya, Nigeria, Togo, I mean, different categories, even in Asia and so on. And then we have to look at our economy, whether whatever we are going to decide on, whether our economy can, 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 can absorb it. Mm -hmm. So in all these, we were guided by about 10 principles. Mm -hmm. So we have what we call equity and fairness, uh, dignity of the position, we had motivation, we had transparency, accountability, economic context. We also looked at risk and responsibility. Altruism is one of them, ethics, and then best practices, acquired or vested rights, and also political climate. So these were the 12 guiding principles that we used in coming up with, with, with our recommendations. And the committee is not, is not just supposed to determine as Russia, not what the, the, the office holders are taking home. No, remember we also have judiciary who are not going home every four years. No. So we are looking at their salaries and so on. So one, we realized that since 2010, since the coming, since 2000, January 2013, none of the Article 71 office holders has gotten any upward adjustment of salary. No. They had not. So they've been receiving uh, what was recommended uh, and approved uh, for the previous government. That is from 2009 to 2013, 16 months. So that's what we think. That's why I said uh, His Excellency Leonardo uh, can decide that I have to set my up and until the committee comes up, I'm not going to take salary or nobody is going to be paid till. Or he can decide, okay, let me take what is there now and then when the committee comes up, with another figure, then we take it from there. So it depends. So it is our committee cannot decide on the salaries of at 71 office holders for the next government. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't extend to that. Mm -hmm. It ends at this point. So it's actually Leonardo 
have to also do that. So based on that, we realize that, well, they have not uh, gotten any uh, salary adjustment. And then the public sector, I mean, the, the, the general public has gotten some kind of uh, annual salary adjustment since 2013. You remember the COLA? Uh, remember the 13 percent after the cola and 10 percent annual increase now we have to over half percent so on average we're talking about 10 percent annual increase for those on a signal spine mm -hmm. and then we also observed the salary, the salary of these office holders and then there were some distortions as well because we recommended some kind of points system for instance if we put the president at 100 then we will say that uh, based on these principles, best practices, the kind of work they are doing, and so on. We can say, well, then maybe a member of parliament is supposed to take this percentage, let's say 60% of that of president. Mm -hmm. And based on that, then we, we cascade it upwards. A minister, a cabinet minister is supposed to take this percentage of the, so we have those point mm -hmm. uh, system. But we realize that the point system had been distorted uh, to the extent that it wasn't the president who was the, who was the highest paid office holder on well, Article 71, no. So it means that distortion must be corrected. And in the Constitution and other acts, it is also not possible to review somebody's salary downwards. It wasn't his fault. So even let's assume that when we started, we realized that the speaker was the highest paid office holder. We cannot reduce the speaker's salary because we cannot vary somebody's salary to a disadvantage. I know it happens a lot of times, even at the corporate level and even the private sector, where workers want more. And your employer will tell you that, listen, it's about our ability to pay. There have been times when even adjustments have been waived over a time because the economy is not in a good state. Yes, of course, the law is there. We will talk about the spirit of the law and all those things. What was the consideration of the economy and the ability to pay factored in determining these uh, severance or ex gratia for all these officers? Well, we haven't spoken about ex gratia. We are, we are talking about the, the, the monthly salary mm. of Article 71 office holders for this particular government. And we have to put it in perspective from 2013, uh, January 7 to 2016, 2017, January 6. So we considered the economy. And I can tell you that we computed the, the total cost on the budget based on that 2.4 percent that we we did and we communicated to those who are supposed to, and they realized that it wasn't because remember that we spoke to parliament we spoke to all of them of course they will prefer more than what we recommended they would not say that oh we want this percentage or no of course some of them would have said oh we have to get this and remember uh the general public was 10 percent on annually if you have done the 10 percent that way the figure would have been much bigger than what you are seeing now. But we, we looked at the economy, and we looked at fairness and equity, and realized that over the period, since they have not enjoyed any increase in salary, we thought that this is how much, and this will be the I won't give you the, the cost uh, 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 to government uh, based on our recommendation. And it wasn't something that the, the economy wouldn't be able to absorb mm. otherwise it wouldn't have come up and for those who were managing the pairs doing all the extrapolations and even from your own observation because i knowing where you're also coming from you can even do that extrapolations even without consulting those who manage the pairs it was clear that we won't suffer any hits on the economy if these things are implemented what i'm what, what, okay let me let me say it again that if the leaked the leaked report that you've seen we did a table and the table we've calculated, and we know that if all these areas are paid, this will be the cost. And of course, we we're mindful of the fact that if you increase it so high, it is going to put a lot of pressure on the election year's budget. On election year's budget. And remember, we are also mindful of the fact that there are other public sector uh, 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 workers who also we, we had information about their salary and so on and so forth so as i said we have all this so if we increase salary by 2.4 percent on annual basis and we compute how much it was then it means that let's let's assume and here i'm not going to give you the actual figure but if the total wage bill of the government is about eight billion and then we compute ours of course the government has been paying 
and then the addition, 2.4%, comes to about 40 million. 40 million of 8 billion. Of course, as I said, we spoke to the finance minister as well. We spoke to, so if we had at the back of our mind, I remember uh, the finance minister had a phrase, he says, remember it is one budget all. Remember it's one budget. And what he was trying to tell us, that whatever recommendation we are going to come up, it will come from the same consultative fund. Mm. So we were very mindful mm. of that. And we're mindful of equity, we're mindful of this and so on. So you know that if you are a worker, and then you are given a 2% annual increase, it is not as much as 10%, or it's not as much as 20%. I, I know that you, are, you are an economist as well, and the, the people would also raise the, the concern about the, the political economy as well. And for you, whether you are worried by some of these commentaries that are coming, whether it's informed or not informed, because they are looking at the bigger picture of the political economy and whether indeed it was fair to do this even at this time, even though you were doing your work, drawing your powers from the Constitution, and that was what you were doing. No, it is not our fault. We've been appointed to do work for the state, and we were, we were, we were given, uh, the, 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 let's say, appointment or whatever, on 1st January, and we finished our work in August. Then we submitted, we have finished our work. Now, when we send it to the president, the president has to approve that of parliament and other office holders. Parliament has to approve that of the executives. So we have, ours have ended. So the president has the right to review whatever recommendation we've done upwards or downwards. Well, that was a conversation my colleague George Riafe had with Dr. Uh, Bob Boating, who is a member of the uh, committee that has been asking for a pay rise for uh, Article 71 holders. Now, look, away from the story, Kalma's return to Mio to a community in the Ningo Pram Pram district following the exchange of gunshots there, which left two people dead. Houses and vehicles, as well as uh, other properties, were torched in the chaos which took place yesterday. The police has begun investigations into the incident. So what really happened and how are residents picking up after yesterday's shootout? My colleague, Enes Kojomeno, is currently in that community and he's been speaking to the assemblyman of that area, Theophilus Nikome. Um, two, we can confirm, have died, 16 others uh, injured, and a lot more have been arrested. Yesterday, as we spoke to the police, they confirmed all of these uh, uh, incidents that happened. Uh, we understand that what happened yesterday was that around 10 a.m., residents of Dawenya came into the community, attacked them, and uh, started shoot, shooting sporadically. Uh, but we'll get, you know, witnesses, uh, we'll speak to residents uh, to tell us exactly what happened here. I have with me the um, assemblyman for the area. Uh, his name is uh, Theophilos Botre. Uh, he's the brother of the late uh, uh, Francis Botre, who, who, who died together with uh, the mason who works uh, on this very uh, structure. Um, thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Thank you very much. Um, can you tell us uh, exactly what happened? Narrate uh, what you know as far as this incident is concerned. I think around 10 o'clock in the morning, 10 a.m., I heard a, a gunshot. Gun, gun so I quickly rush, rushed to the scene. Okay. But I realized that it, it was the Wenya people the Onya boys, okay. uh, Makoko, and let's say uh, uh, Chief Kwakudapo okay. and his family who were doing those things. Okay. Be be before we proceed on that uh, and who exactly is involved, do you, do you have issues with the Onya as far as lands are concerned? Is that right? Ye yes. Uh, what, what exactly is that issue for which you know that, that uh, served as... Uh, you know, sparks for this incident? Uh, since uh, 2005, the Wenya people encroached our land, Kwakudapo and his family. Mm -hmm. So we went to several courts. We end up at uh, Supreme Court. We won the case. They said they didn't understand. They entered the land by force with their own langas. And so they were there selling the land doing whatever they like. But just recently, 
they attack us two times. Okay. But, but why is the land actually, the land in contention? The land fall from Central, Central University or Pram Pram Road, okay. Pram Pram Main Road okay. to my 30. Okay. We, we share boundary with uh, Oningo people. Okay. <laughs> so due to that, they were attacked us two times. Tomorrow, uh, yesterday included is two times. So I call Pram Pram people. From a uh, police commander, they came and I called them a re regional uh, command. The regional command also done his best, mm -hmm. same people. So we managed to catch about, to arrest about uh, 17 people. Okay. So I was happy because they were the people who burned the cars and uh, shooting guns around the area. But unfortunately, I had another gunshot inside the town, Mutual Town. So I, I, I drove inside before I met five police people from Tamar region. I am the person, I'm an assemblyman, I'm the person who work with the policemen and the uh, fire service and those all security personnel. But those police people, I don't see them, but I know them from uh, Tema region. So three were guiding, stopping people not to come in. Other two also were here. So I told them that, where is my brother? They told me that it's unfortunately, it's a mistake. Mistake for what? You show me. I'm going there. They didn't allow me. Then I told them that I didn't have a gun. I didn't have anything. So I'm going to see where my brother lies. So, so it was the police that told you that they had mistakenly shot your yes. brother? Yes. Exactly. So I, I, I came here yesterday. I didn't see my I just saw my brother. Then the police driver, the driver who is driving the, the vehicle told me that this is your brother. Your brother is lying li li down there. So I saw my brother. And quickly I went to them, asked them what happened. They said that I should have a science patient. It's by mistake. I asked them that don't did you know you don't know that this person said they knew him. The, the incident happy. Accident happy before they know that. Because my brother is ran away. I said, oh, as an assemblyman or a civilian, I know that if somebody is run away, you have to shot his leg. But straight bullet to his head, I think it's plan work. So, so the explanation the police gave was that they had to shoot him because he was running Run, away. Running away. Okay. First, they told me that uh, my brother have a gun. Mm. You see, when I came here, my brother didn't have a gun, but rather a phone, mobile phone. So you met the dead body of your the brother lying there, the and and I think at this point we want to approach uh, exactly where the shootings happened. Uh, as you can see there, uh, there's blood, yeah. and the stand he was shot right here. This is the scene of the incident. He was shot right here, and we were told he was initially asked. Uh, to surrender we don't know we can't confirm that but um, as his brother narrates to us earlier that he was asked to surrender and uh, turn face the ground yeah, it was yeah, at the yeah. time that the shooting happened yeah. is that so yes there was an eyewitness okay. narrated all the incident to me accident to me that he was here this uh, very sorry building so they told my brother to lie down Immediately. So my brother lied down facing the, the sun. So they quickly told him to face the, turn back to the ground. So when my brother turned back to the ground, begging them, then they shot his head. Not, I think not once, because if you can see the cartridge there. Yesterday, I collected four cartridge here to the 
uh, soldiers, Michelle Camp soldiers. Okay. They were around here. So, <laughs> um, um, but yesterday when we spoke to the police, they said it couldn't have been between residents of Mutual and Dorwenya because at the time they got here, the incident had died out and nothing was happening. All they did was to ensure law and order and to uh, provide enough security for the community. I swear, my good God, the, 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 my, my maker, that the question that I ask the police people, the answer they give me, <laughs> it's a, they, they say that it's a mistake. So if they had a press conference and tell the whole Ghana, including the world, that the Oenya people or the Oenya land guard killed my brother and the missing, it's not true. So yes, they, they were run away, ran, ran from the scene, and once God is with us, I don't think that unless they kill me, if they kill me. So that brings us to the other point about the second person who died in this incident, the Mason. He was the Mason to your brother. Yes, it's your brother a contractor. What does he do? Or this structure belongs to him. He he was the person who is taking care. On, on the, uh, this house, so you can see that he planted okra and everything. His uh, dresses is inside the room. So this is my mind, and it's true, because the guy saw the scene. So to narrated all the story, they kill him also among. So you are alleging that the police had to kill him in order to kill any witness uh, or anybody who witnessed the shooting that happened uh, earlier to your brother? Yes, exactly. But uh, in Ghana, we say uh, uh, we have some saying that ke okutushi bona okutushi ni okwa mokoguna mokohu ekwa oguna nagata me. We have somebody, an eyewitness, saw everything. So the, the, uh, the, what the eyewitness told me and what the police told me earlier on is not the Wenya people. Okay. I don't lie to the Wenya people. If the Wenya people give them money to do that, that one, I, 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 I can't tell. Okay. But I know that it's exactly... Okay. So he places uh, more premium or value on the uh, eyewitness account. Come with me, sir. I, I understand that uh, the shooting incident, um, as far as the uh, mason is concerned, happened inside uh, this very structure. And as he narrated earlier on, the, there was a, an eyewitness who saw that the police chased the young man in here. As you can see on the ground, we have, uh, you know, some blood sprinkled here. And this is the structure the young man has been taken care of uh, for his late brother, Francis uh, Botry. Uh, we're told the incident actually happened right in here. A very gory scene, I should say. Uh, pretty soon we'll be speaking to uh, a colleague journalist who arrived here much earlier. He saw the body being carried away, and uh, he will tell us also his side of the story. And I must say that we have seen some, you know, cartridges and what have you here earlier. We took shots of them. I'll be sharing with our viewers. Yes. First, I don't know that there was another body lie down here. But the police slandered here, don't want anybody to come inside. There I realized that there is somebody. So quickly, I told the parents that it's not my brother alone. So I jumped the wall, the, the, I jumped the window, come inside before I saw the boy also lie down here. So you were actually the one who found out. So I received a beating, severe beating from one policeman that I knew, that I knew from uh, Tema region. So this is exactly what happened. 
his police Ghana Ghana police personnel from Tema with their vehicle number GP 3979. It's Toyota pickup. All right, thank you very much, uh, Daniel uh, Botre. Uh, Theophilus, 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 Theoph Theophilus Nibotre. Nibotre. he's the assemblyman for the area, and he is also brother uh, to the late Francis Botre, who died yesterday, uh, together with a mason in this uh, very structure. Uh, we're following up on the story, and we'll bring you every side, every angle to this. Keep your tabs on Joy News. So that was my colleague, Ennis Menu, who is live in uh, Miocho. Currently, he was speaking to the assemblyman of the area where there was an alleged shootout between uh, some land guards from Dowenya and uh, other residents of Miocho. And he also lost his brother, unfortunately, in that incident. And he was narrating events as told him, uh, as was told him by an eyewitness. And he mentions that uh, the police told him uh, that it was a mistake that they had shot his brother. He also mentions that uh, the police cordoned off uh, that particular building where the shooting incident occurred. And he jumped uh, a window, entered the building, and realized there was another body there. And he got a very sound beating for that uh, by a policeman. And I'm sure it was all because they didn't want uh, people to come into that area because it had been cordoned. And we know that particular area has some land issues. And I'll be speaking to Ernest shortly. And also the spokesperson of uh, the police in that area, Tema Regional Police, ASP Julian Obing, uh, spoke earlier to join us and she mentioned that the police had not uh, killed any of the two persons who've died so far uh, in, this, in this particular area incident. My colleague Ernest is still on standby and so we'll would be getting more details from him. Ernest, um, apart from Mr. Theophilus Butcher, who is the assemblyman uh, of that area and who also lost his brother, who else have you been speaking to and what have they been telling you? Okay, so um, I have been speaking to uh, a colleague journalist who was here yesterday who actually witnessed the banter um, uh, between the police and the deceased and also a brother of, uh, a younger brother actually of uh, the deceased, uh, Francis uh, Botre. I'll be speaking to him right now and uh, he'll tell us exactly uh, what happened. He uh, is speaking on condition of anonymity and so um, um, tell us. Came to me the policeman when I was around when they called me that my brother was shot. So I ran to the scene to come and see what is going on. So I met the policeman to ask them what is going on. And the policeman said, my brother put a gun on them. Or oh, he, he gave one shot. That was the reason why they shot him. I said, why should you do that? Why would my brother point a gun at you whilst he knows you are a policeman? It wasn't in the midnight. No, it was in the daylight. So the three policemen, all of them were saying different things. And I said, they shouldn't say things to upset us. Now they have caused havoc. We are, our heart is heavy and we are crying. If they will find something, they should say they did the thing mistakenly. Or if they have been bribed for them to do that. But they shouldn't be saying that my brother was having gone. Meanwhile, my brother was standing by his, his own house with his mason working. But we, we cannot substantiate whether they've been bribed or not. We cannot uh, uh, confirm that. But you, you, you saw your brother lying here. Okay. At, at the time, was uh, the mason also at post? The mason was also dead. Okay. The, the so mason was dead. I didn't know even there was a mason here. But it was a policeman who told me there were two. There were two. There were two and they were armed. So they shot all of them. That was what the policeman told me. So later, the, before we discovered that the missing was inside the room. So we know that maybe by then when the missing saw that they were shooting my brother and he was uh, trying to run away and they followed him and sh they shot him also. 
Okay, all right. Uh, so a lot of uh, accusations here. Uh, the the residents and the family, of course, of the disease seem not to trust the police in this matter. Mm. They they think that the police has been compromised. Let me speak now, Bernice, to uh, a, a colleague journalist. He was here yesterday and also witnessed, uh, you know, the incident. Uh, tell us exactly what you saw upon your arrival here. Okay, so upon our arrival after a distress calls from some of the residents here, we came here. We saw the police van. Most of them, they had the support from also the military personnel here. They were here. We saw the dead body lying. Initially, we all thought it was one dead body here because that was what they made us know that it was one dead, dead, dead body here with a bullet pierced inside his head. We saw most of his brains gushing out from the head on the ground. So he was lying down dead and they brought in the, the pickup to pick the dead body. So they, they put the, carried the dead body into the 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 back of the pickup then later we got to know there was another dead body inside there was a young guy he was he's really young i think he he he, he can be like maybe 19 or 18. well, well i'm told he's uh, about 25 years from what we heard from the assemblyman okay because he, I, I i got to know he was a mason working on this particular building so the man went and called him to come and see some some of the uh, i think the places he needs to work on so then he was here then before we, we, heard, we, we got to know he was inside. So he was also placed on, at, at the back of the pickup and they were taken. But later we got to know that the, the, the land gas, the gun building land gas who came in from Dowenia had also bent some vehicles belonging to the deceased. Yeah, belonging to the disease and also properties. He had he had a restaurant. I think that that belongs to the son. And, and this was in the morning when when they attacked the community yeah, yeah. around 10 a.m. I'm told. Yeah, 10 a.m. Because when 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 the distress call came, we even heard gunshots. Yeah, on in the phone. I mean, people, people were shouting like he was screaming for help and stuff. So even we even heard gunshots. So when we went there, we saw most of the cars. I think five five of the vehicles have been burnt, and I think one of them have been sprayed with bullets. And it was it was it, it was really um, I I mean a pathetic scene when you, you could see that houses like uh, a whole restaurant partly parts of the restaurant has been bent down and vehicles have been bent down and most of the residents had gone into hiding because they were scared for their lives okay. and I think one of the things I've observed is that the area here needs to get a, I think a police post because from my point of view where, when you look at the Chiefs Palace which is closer to the roadside. He can be a prime target. Anything can happen to him. I'm not saying, but I think the community needs to get a, a police post here. Because then when the, when the situation came in the morning, the, the land guards, uh, the suspected land guards, gun wielding land guards, they came here in the morning around 10 o'clock. They were shooting sporadically. And there was nobody here. They even called police personnel from the Pram Pram, I think, the Winya. And none of them responded on time. So I think a team from Tema then came in. And I think the the Tamil commander did a very good job. I went in the SP, DCOP, I went in, did a very good job in trying to maintain law and order here because most of the residents were really peeved at the world because they were accusing the police of shooting their their their, their kinsman. They they accused because mo from information gathered from the residents, they said they saw the police shooting towards the deceased. You know. All, all of them knew it was only one person. That was the king, their kinsman who was shot. Before, let me find out though. At the time you came in, did you see, um, you know, residents of Dawenya who attacked the Mucho com community? Did you see them around, or they had escaped at the time you came? Well, at the time we came, they've arrested I think 15 of them, okay. with I think six of them sustaining severe, I mean I think blood injury, injuries. Okay. Yeah, so they were sent to the Tema General Hospital for treatment then. Yeah, so 15 of them were arrested initially by the, by the police and six of them were taken to the Tema General Hospital yeah, for medical treatment. All right. Thank you very much, Philip. Philip uh, is a journalist. Uh, he works with uh, Atenka TV. So, Bernice, uh, that's the latest right now uh, here at Miocho. We need a lot of response, uh, answers from the police. Uh, there's a lot of allegations and accusations uh, leveled 
called uh, at the police and we need them to respond to all of those issues of shooting uh, the two men involved here and also siding with uh, the Dawenya uh, community as well. And so we need them to respond to all of that, Bernice. All right, Ernest, um, is the land you're standing on the land that is being you know, disputed over, uh, where the building is, is located now? Uh, Benis, can you come again with a question, please? I'm asking where this building is uh, located. I'm sure is the is the building of uh, Mr. Francis Butcher, who is deceased now. Is that the land uh, the exactly. the, the uh, Dawenya land guards are fighting over? No, no, not at all, Ben. It's the land is actually uh, located, you know, it, it, it's it's at the border. It's a borderland actually between Dawenya and Pram Pram. Okay, and so it is, it is on the outskirts of the community, it is not here. But, um, you know, because there have been disputes, it, it, the, the issues come up every now and then, and this was just an attack, you know, sprung on them uh, unawares. And so the land is actually not here. And that's not the first time this has happened. That's not the first time. I'm told in August there was another attack uh, uh, where one person died from residents of uh, Darwinia. They attacked the mutual community again. So the land in question is not here, but uh, it appears that the late Francis Botre is one key person who is leading the charge for residents of uh, 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 mutual and so they the, the the planning or the idea is that once he is attacked uh, they wouldn't have a leader as it were to mm. help them fight uh, uh, this cause and so and and, that, and, and that, that's that why his that other properties including cars and uh, this said restaurants were also attacked but Ennis, have you been to um, uh, absolutely absolutely ha have you been to the the houses of the deceased and uh, what, for example, the other gentleman, yes, the uh, mason who lost his life, uh, what has his family been telling you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was there. Uh, in fact, that was the first uh, point of call when I came into the mutual community. Uh, family members had gathered at the house. They, um, of course, they were mourning. They were sad that they had lost their relatives and their loved ones. Um, a lot of them couldn't speak to me, especially the women, and so I could only speak to the assemblyman and uh, brothers of the late Francis and the Mason. Um, they can't say much right now, Bernice, uh, but one thing is clear, and there's one refrain in the community that they think that the police is, is compromising this, and the police is, is solely to blame uh, for the death of their brother and the Mason involved. Thank you very much, Ernest. We sure will get a response from the Ghana Police Service. That was my colleague, Ernest Menu, who is currently in Mutual, where there was a shootout yesterday, allegedly between some gentlemen uh, from uh, the uh, Dawinga community, which is a border uh, community uh, uh, in, in that part of the country. Really sad developments there. But we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be telling you what the NDC is planning to do uh, in getting to know what caused their defeat in the 2016 elections.